This is part 6 of ASP.NET Chart Control tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss binding data to the chart control using data bind table method. In part 5, we discussed data binding using data source property. In this demo, we will be working with the same example that we worked with in part 5. So please watch part 5 before proceeding. When the data bind table method is called, it automatically creates and adds a new series to the chart control. So this means there is no need to specify the series in the HTML markup of the chart control declaratively. This also means that we can delete the series element from the chart control. Let's flip to Visual Studio and delete the series element from the chart control. So that's our first step. The second step is to use the data bind table method in the code behind file. Notice at the moment we are using data source property. Let's delete these lines and then invoke data bind table method. Notice there are two overloaded versions of this method. We are going to use this overloaded version which takes two parameters. The first parameter is the data source that contains the data for the chat control. In our case, SQL data reader object contains the data for the chat control. And the second parameter is the name of the column that contains the values for x-axis. We want student name to be displayed on x-axis. So that is the column that contains the values for y-axis. Now if you look at this query, it has got two columns. And we only specify the column that contains values for x-axis. So this means data bind table is going to automatically use the other column for y-axis values. Now with these changes, let's run this. and notice the data is displayed as expected. Now look at this, when I change the chart type, for example, when I select pi, we get a runtime error and notice what the error says. It says a chart element with the same with the name series one could not be found in the series collection. And where do we have the error? We have the error where we are setting the chart type dynamically. So we have that error on this line right here. Now, we don't have a series with that name. Remember, we have deleted um, you know, the series which has got name series1. When this data bind table method is called, what is this going to do? It's going to automatically create and add a new series. And we don't know the name of that series. It will be dynamically set by the data bind table method. Now, here we are getting a reference to the series by its name. There is another way as well. We can also use the index of the series. Okay, so we can use the series index instead of name. Now we know that, you know, at least there is going to be one series present inside the chart control and we want to set the chart type of that series. With this change, let's go ahead and run this one more time. And then now let's select, for example, pi and notice that the data is displayed using a pie chart. Okay, now here we're using the series index, you know, we can do that or we can also use uh, first or default link method if you prefer. For example, instead of using the index, I can use first or default, but before that we need to bring in system.link namespace. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's use first or default method here. and notice that the chart still works as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.